Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders Metropolitan Community Church offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today, or pick up one of the connection flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org, and find us on Facebook. And join us in making Founders Metropolitan Community Church your one-stop spiritual portal. If this is your first Sunday at Founders, you are our guest, and we would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center and meet some new friends. We would love to hear your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out the welcome tablets. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you are joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website and let us know that you are joining us. Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a place of diversity and welcome, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. Will you please join in our call to worship? Actually, in our opening prayer. Join me. Come, taste and see. Jesus Christ, you invite all people to your open table. You make us, your people, a beloved community. You restore the joy of our relationship with God, even in the midst of loneliness, despair, and degradation. We are each unique, and we all belong, a priesthood of all believers. Baptized and filled with your Holy Spirit, you empower us to be your healing presence in a hurting world. We expect to see your reign on earth as it is in heaven, as we work toward a world where everyone has enough, wars cease, and all creation lives in harmony. We affirm your charge to all of humanity to care for the land, sea, and air. Therefore, we will actively resist systems and structures which are destroying your creation. With all of creation, we worship you. Every tribe, every language, every people, every nation, we know you by many names, triune God, beyond comprehension, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, who invites us to the feast. Amen. Please rise your able in body and spirit for our opening song. This is the day, this is the day <laughs> that, that our God has made. That our God has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that our God. Rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that our God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that our God has made. 
Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. This is the day, and what a wonderful, joyful day it is. It is a glorious and beautiful day to come together as community and come together as worship. So welcome. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. And for everybody who's joining us online, I would like to say a special welcome to you this morning. Um, It is always a joy and a blessing to know that we are joined in each worship service by people from around the world. We encourage you at some point during the service to just scroll down on that screen where you're watching um, this worship service, and you'll find that there's a place where you can let us know um, that you worshiped with us, as well as give us your thoughts about the worship service, and enter in any of your prayer requests that we may hold you up and support you spiritually throughout the week. To everybody who is here, I don't know if there are anybody who is new among us, but if you're a first-time visitor or relatively new to the community, we ask you now to to let us know. We have a special gift and a little information for you. Um, Do we have any first-time visitors today? All right, then. So we are community, and we are community together, and so I now invite you to rise as you're able to greet those who are near you to extend the hand of friendship. Peace. Please remain risen as you are able for the reading of the scripture. Good morning. Our reading today is from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 through 5, and it is taken from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's peoples, and God will, and God will be with them. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Hear what the Spirit says today.
Please be seated. They'll know we are Christians by our love. I think this is God's dream for us. It is God's dream that has always been. It's the dream that I think was there in the very, very beginning, in the opening sentences, in the first verses of the book of Genesis, in the moments of creation where God sets aside all of chaos. And they are the words that we hear there at the very end of our Holy Scriptures, the book of Revelation, where God's dream is heaven found here on earth, that God dwells with us and in us and through us. No more death and no more tears and no more sorrows. And it is a dream that we are each called and empowered to work for. And yet, in a week like this week, it is clear that that dream is but a dream. And the real question is, what is our role in making that dream a reality? Well, we gathered from around the world people from the metropolitan community churches, clergy and laity and husbands and spouses and wives and families, gathered there in order to hold this movement in prayer, in order to create a new statement of faith, which is what our opening prayer actually was, our new statement of faith, in order to do bylaw changes, to elect a new governing board, to try elect a new moderator. <laughs> and yet, even as we met in Baton Rouge, there was grief. In Minnesota, there was tragedy. And then, as people gathered together for a peaceful march, as sheriffs and police officers tried to create a perimeter of protection around those peaceful demonstrators, Someone took it upon themselves in order to perpetrate violence, to take the lives as some sort of twisted sense of revenge. If they will know that we are Christians or believers or followers or whatever word or term that you want to put on yourself, if people will know that God lives among us, that heaven has come on earth, it is time for us to set aside the senseless noise and the senseless violence. It is time for us to ask the question, how do we actually participate? Do we just tolerate all of this nonsense and noise? Do we somehow wait until Jesus returns and just say, woe are us and woe are we, but someone else has got it? Do we wait for that Savior to ride in on some sort of a horse or some party ticket or some Savior of a moderator of a denomination or a movement or some next senior pastor who will solve all of our problems and somehow all of a sudden snap their fingers and make it all start to work out? Or do we accept the challenge that amid the pain and the grief and the loss that we are called to be so much more today so much more yesterday, and so much more tomorrow. It is a week like this week that I think that we are reminded just how far we have strayed from tending God's garden of peace, from nurturing those places and spaces and times where God's love can truly thrive, from being and living in ways that God with us is more than just some sort of a hopeful platitude it becomes a way of being that God is not only with us, but that we hold ourselves accountable to acting as though God is living in us and through us and in each and every other. I am reminded that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and that the Word was God. That all things, and I'll say all people, came into being through the Word, and without the Word, not one thing or person came into being. And we are told at the very opening chapter in the Gospel of John that what has come into being in the Word is Christ Jesus who is life, who brings life, who gives life, who resurrects life. And that life is the light, the light that shines even amidst the horrible chaos, the terrible tragedy, the mourning, the death, the senseless violence. 
the words and the acts and the feelings that we perpetrate on one another as we act out of our own hurtful and brokenness. Christ is the Word, the Word of God that lives and thrives, and yet it is in these hurtful, broken times that the very Word is what gets silenced. It's the word of hope and the word of love. And too often, it is the words and the hopes and the dreams of marginalized others that are snuffed out and silenced and never given a place to live or thrive, to be seen or heard. And so, unfortunately, at the hands of others, those dreams and hopes die. A couple of years ago, I took a weekend and I attended an intensive three-day experience, white people confronting racism. It was an opportunity for me to challenge my own internal assumptions, the ways that I participate in systems of power, in ways that I have privilege that I don't even realize, the ways that sometimes, because of me just being a white male in North America, that in my presence, the voices of others fall silence. We got to a point in this interactive experience where the facilitator asked us to somehow embody and somehow act out what it was that we're feeling right in that moment. And I stood in place. She said, what, what is it? What is it that you want to do? And I said, the only thing that comes to mind right now is when I hear all of this, when I feel this pain, I just want to curl up into a fetal position. She said, why don't you? I said, because. Because one, I'm afraid that if I do, I won't have the courage or find the strength to get up to face what needs to be faced. And two, more importantly, I understand that we need to face the senseless violence, that we need to stand against all of the oppression, that we can't go and hide ourselves away in those safe places of comfort and pretend that somebody else will protect us or that somehow I can fall asleep and wake up and somehow the world will fix itself. I believe that it is my role and my position as a person who is a follower, as one who believes in the Word and wants to make space for the words of others, that it is exactly that, that I have to use my presence, my position, in order to listen deeply to those unheard and silenced voices, to make those spaces where all stories can be heard, to somehow work beyond and move beyond those senseless acts and fragmented views that we can share our stories as sacred stories and begin to weave this dream, God's dream, together. Even at General Conference, Although we adopted a new statement of faith, and it's a beautiful, wonderful prayer, we made bylaw changes, and we elected a new governing board, and nonetheless, we failed. We failed to elect a new moderator. It is unclear the reasons why that did not happen, but what I know is that there were hurts, and there were hopes that were dashed. There were dreams, and there were visions. And underneath it all, what I heard through that was fear and anxiety and uncertainty about the nature of this movement and who would be the right person to lead us. And in the aftermath of having spent three years to try to prepare for this very election, of going through the process of spending with a team of four other people from around the world, thousands of hours over three years, we certainly were disappointed. We certainly were demoralized. And though we wanted to reach for what was at work, as we listened deeply through all of that, I believe that I could hear the voice of Spirit calling us yet again to be more together. We did not pick a moderator because I don't believe that Spirit thought that we were ready. We did not pick the next moderator because we yet again were turning to the ways of the world, looking for that Savior to ride in on some sort of white horse, 
not recognizing and not realizing that what really was afoot was this powerful shift where the power in order to live out this dream is the power which needs to be embodied within and through each one of us. The role of the denomination and the role of the moderator has shifted profoundly. That person is but an individual to help to knit together the various dreams and to make that space where what's going on locally can be seen and heard and found globally. But what is most critical and what is most important is how we in these local congregations choose to live God's dream together. I believe that God has this dream. It is a dream that was there at the beginning and from the beginning. And it is a dream in which every single one of us have been invited. Every single one of us have been gifted uniquely. Every single one of us has something to contribute by sharing our stories and finding ways that we move together. It is why I believe that God gathered the people and brought them out of captivity and across the wilderness. Why God speaks through messengers and prophets. Why God came to us to be with us in the person who is Jesus. And why Jesus comes to us still. Comes to the oppressed and the marginal and the poor and the rich and the powerful. To everybody, to all people in all times and certainly in this time. And it is why I believe that God created and called into being the body that is the church and why I believe most profoundly nearly 50 years ago, God called into being this incredibly richly diverse movement. This congregation, this very congregation that we might actually choose to be a people called out to live differently. Now, these are big dreams. God's dream is a big dream. It is a dream which is bigger than any one of our agendas, any one of our ideas, any one of the dreams that, or hopes that we may have as individuals or even as groups of people. And what it might look like can seem overwhelming and overpowering. And yet, I believe when we choose to make that kind of space to give life to the hopes and the dreams and to make space to hear the stories of another. We act with the love of God. We act in ways that God is not just with us, but is actually living and being and breathing in us and through us. And it happens in very local ways. And so I turn to an easier way to understand this story. There is a lady, her name is Ellie McKay, and she lives just north of Toronto. She wrote this children's story, it's called Butterfly Park, and in this story, she tells the story of a young girl who moves into a new town, and she feels lost and alone, and as she arrives at her new house, she happens to notice that it is very plain and gray, and she's feeling lost, and she's feeling alone. But she notices, she notices that right next to this house, there is this park, and it has a shiny sign, and she traces the letters, and she sounds out the words, and it's called Butterfly Park. And so she readies herself the next morning. She gets up bright and early. She gathers up a plate full of cookies because she says it's always good to make a first impression. And she heads into Butterfly Park, And she arrives, and no one is there. No flowers are there. No trees are there. No butterflies are there. Butterfly Park apparently once was a dream. And that dream has been forgotten. Perhaps it's the busyness of our world. Perhaps it's the busyness of building buildings and building dreams and building empires. But one way or another, Butterfly Park was neglected. And so she waits and she waits and she waits and she has a cookie and she waits some more and 
Eventually, she sees a butterfly fluttering around in her neighbor's yard, and she runs over, and she knocks on the door, and a young boy answers, and she asks for help. And so he and a bunch of other children come out with nets to capture some of the butterflies, and they do so, and they bring them into Butterfly Park, and sure enough, they fly away. There's nothing there to nourish or feed their dreams, like too often we find in our churches and in our movements and in our societies where there is fear and there is hurt and there is frightening things going on. And so they follow the butterfly and it weaves and it winds up and around and down the stairs and up the hills and eventually she knows just what to do. And the following morning she rises early and she gathers some flowers and she heads back into Butterfly Park and she waits, and she waits, and she waits, flowers in hand, but no one is there, and there are no butterflies. The hope and the dream starts to flit away when she happens to notice a sound off in the distance, and it is her neighbors who have been so inspired by the winsome wisdom and the playful courage of her amazing dream that they reconnect and they bring wheelbarrows and shovels and plants and flowers. They teach her that good plants and flowers need solid roots and they need to be tended. And they replant the garden and they fill it full of life and love and laughter and flowers. And soon the butterflies come on their own accord. And eventually, she feels at home in her new community together. It is this kind of dream that I think that we're called to explore. But it is a dream that only rises when we follow God's dream, and we follow God's way, and we take our time to do the work in order to create a space that nourishes the dreams and the hopes of others. It may or may not be flowers or chocolate chip cookies that fill your hope and fill your dream. But what I do understand is that God's dream comes from following the way. And that is the way of love, which is found when God dwells within and among us. It is the hope that rises when we make space to see each person and to hear each person and to let them know in the time that we spend and the space that we make that everyone and everything matters. I believe that God has been inviting us into this very dream from the beginning through those messengers and through those prophets, through those signs and through those wonders, calling us to make these spaces so that hopeful seeds can find a place and germinate, that roots may grow and that we may tend to nourishing the dreams and the hopes of a diverse and beautiful rainbow people. Archbishop Tutu puts it this way. He says, God is saying to you, Child of God, I have a dream. Please help me to realize it. It is a dream of a world whose ugliness and squalor and poverty, its war and its hostility, its greed and harsh competitiveness, its alienation and disharmony are changed into their glorious counterparts where laughter, love, and peace reign. What does that dream look like for you? What might that dream look like for us? How do we take the hurts and the ugliness and the squalor and transform them together into those hopeful dreams right here beginning in this space and moving out into our neighborhood and into our city and then into the world? You are invited to listen deeply for spirit that is moving within and through you. You'll find at the back of the sanctuary these big blue pieces of sky. They're places where our dreams can take flight. You'll also find that there are envelopes with pens and little butterflies. You're invited in a word or two to share 
what is your dream that we can collect all these dreams up together? And then to post it someplace on that sky and maybe just write a word or two or a sentence right next to it. And if you feel courageous enough even to put your name by it. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to transform our social hall into Butterfly Park. And we're going to relocate all of these hopes and these dreams down in our fellowship hall. And we're going to invite you over the course of the next few weeks to look at and ponder and pray and wonder and find ways that we might weave all of these dreams together. I believe in the beginning and from the beginning, we have been called to be a people called out to live differently. Let us join together and let this dream emerge. Amen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. For those of you who are joining us online, I now invite you to take a moment and gather up the grape juice, the crackers, the bread, whatever it is that you might use to celebrate communion um, while you're watching us. In a few minutes, we will celebrate an open table and um, we will consecrate and bless our elements. And as we do so, it'll be an opportunity for us to share in this universal communion together. I do invite you whether it's during the offering or after communion or during communion or even after the worship service, to just take a moment and to fill, <clears throat> to fill the skies with your dreams and your hopes. Each week when we come together, we celebrate the people who make ministry happen here. And this week we are celebrating the ministry of Garrett Clint. Garrett has been coming for, yes... He's been coming to Founders Metropolitan Community Church for, for over 20 years, and in that time he has participated in many, many different ministries. Um, today you'll find him he as um, helping with the, the altar guild for the 9 o'clock service, making our table ready so that we can actually celebrate um, this wonderful, fabulous meal and have worship together. He is also the person who leads our Wednesday, once a month Wednesday, Laundry Love uh, ministry, and there's more information you'll find um, on the inside of your bullet that, bulletin that actually both describes his ministry as well as that very, very important ministry. Laundry Love has been going for nearly eight years now. It is a time where we gather together so that people who are living on the street, the homeless, have a way and a place to actually do their laundry so that they can actually have some clean clothes to sleep in and to wear, and it is ministers and people and volunteers volunteers from this congregation that makes that act of love possible. And so Garrett, come on down. We thank you today. And we thank everybody who volunteered to make ministry happen here. There are so many different ways. Um, it is always, always, always a blessing. Um, I do remind you that this Saturday at 9 o'clock at The Onion, um, is going to be um, Bob McDill's memorial service. Um, you may remember that Reverend um, Bob passed away um, suddenly the end of May, and so we're going to hold him in prayer. There are a number of us from the congregation who are going, so if you need a ride, please do let us know. Um, there is information um, in your newsletter, um, as well as we put it in the e-news, and uh, I will make sure that we have that information there in e-news um, this coming week as well. On Saturday, we have a number of things happening. Um, very, very important things that are happening. Um, so first and foremost is our trans prom, 
And so uh, there are people who are selling tickets. Um, we really in invite you to come on out. It's going to be taking place 7 o'clock um, in the theater, in, in Fellowship Hall. It is an opportunity to just kind of celebrate, have that prom that maybe you never had, to share some time in community. And, and it is also a fundraiser for the Christine Daniels Scholarship. And so uh, please come out um, to support our uh, members of TransUnity and to support that very, very important cause. Um, it is really, really good work and it's going to be a fun time. Um, anybody who, who uh, anybody is welcome. So, so uh, please do come for that. Um, simultaneously, um, we're actually gonna be starting something new. Every Saturday, um, beginning um, this coming Saturday through Labor Day weekend, we're gonna actually have movies in the courtyard. It is an opportunity for us to come together as community. It's also a way for us um, to prepare for Sunday worship because our next ser series, which begins next Sunday, is called Defying Gravity, and it is going to be based on eight different um, contemporary movies. Um, they are fun movies. They are the kinds of movies um, that I like to go to. Um, they are CGI, mostly children's story from Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks. Um, they are movies like Inside Out and Up and Home and Avatar. And um, as we go through that series, we're going to actually be looking at um, life and love and relationship and what the characters and the storylines tell us about how we can be um, deeper and better community together. Um, so we really invite you to come out and check those out. Um, we also invite you, if you're not able to come, maybe check out the movie at home. Um, we are going to be doing brief, brief clips, and we're going to have to run those clips um, five or so minutes before worship starts um, because we're not allowed to broadcast those clips for copyright. We can show them here in the sanctuary. We can show them in the courtyard, um, but we can't broadcast them or record them. Um, and so we're going to show the brief clips before service. So we, we also invite you um, the next several weeks to get here a little bit early um, to check out those clips that we'll be featuring um, in each Sunday's message um, as we go forward. Uh, next Sunday, following our 11 o'clock worship service and before our 1.30 worship service, um, we will also have our next quarterly town hall meeting. Um, it is an opportunity for the board to keep you abreast on important happenings in the congregation, including our finances. Um, it is also going to be an opportunity where our lay delegates are going to be sharing with you um, the details of all of the important happenings um, that happened up in Victoria at General Conference. So we really invite you um, to come and check that out. Um, I don't see a board member, so I guess I'm going to do... Oh, there you are. Oh, okay. Come on up. Come on up. Um, and so now somebody's going to share a really fabulous message about how to make ministry happen here. Darkness cannot drive darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive hate. Only love can do that. From Martin Luther King, Jr. We are all saddened and hurt by what is happening in the world right now. We are grieving for the loss of our family and friends. At the same time, we are grateful for all the people who were able to fly to Canada and back safely for MCC's general conference. We need your support to continue the fight, the fight for social justice and meet the needs of the people who are coming to us to seek light in this time of darkness. We are here to share our stories, to share our dreams, to emerge and serve, because God has shown us that love conquers hate. Help us today to share that powerful love. Give us as you are able. Thank you.
come show the slide we give you but our own and let's say it together? Yes, let's say this together. We give you but your own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is yours alone. We give it gratefully. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know how many of you know Mary Ann, but she's a member of our church who has not been able to visit physically. She is a member of our church who has not been able to visit physically, but I understand that she watches us every Sunday. So I just want to say, Mary Ann, you are with us here at this table today. Also, we are going to be saying the Lord's Prayer together and the Santos. So when it comes to that part, we'll do exactly what we did just then. Loving God, help us to respond with that love which is true and sincere even when we encounter folks who are mean, dishonest, and hateful. Mm. And Brother Jesus, remind us of your call to us to love all people as if they were our sisters and brothers. For you seek to weave us into one family, tearing down all the barriers between us. Spirit of strength, no matter how weary we become from our loneliness, our struggles, and our service, continue to challenge us to be patient, to rejoice, and to never stop praying. Mm. And oh, triune God, never let us forget we do all these things because we are your people, called to lives which are different and which makes a difference. God and community, holy and one, Hear this prayer as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Creator, Creator, which, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, come. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the dominion and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we're reminded for our call to reconciliation, that if God is in every person we meet, what does it say about the harmful words that we may speak, the hurt we cause to others in our lives? Yet we are invited to bring our faults and foolishness and brokenness and bitterness to our God, confessing all that blocks our relationship with you, God, and with others and with our very self. Join me in this moment of silence as we offer up parts of our lives that need to be transformed and made anew. In all that is holy, we pray. Amen. Please join me in our assurance of pardon, which is responsorial. Let the community of faith say so. God's love endures forever. Let those gathered in grace say so. God's love endures forever. Let those gathered from all parts of the world say so. God's love endures forever. This is the good news for us. God's love endures forever. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. In our prayer of great thanksgiving, we're reminded that God dwells in you. And, and also, also in you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Bypassing the emptiness of chaos, you set out by way of creation to bring beauty and goodness into being God of every moment. You offered us the immeasurable riches of your gracious and joyous heart. But we were impatient, <laughs> speaking against your dreams and hopes. Yeah. Through the prophets, you sent your son, which could heal, heal us and bring us back to you. But we refused to give up. Living among those foolish passions. So then you sent your child 
to deliver us from all our distress and to gather us home. With those who are rich in your mercy, with those who long to draw near to us, let us say together the Santo. Santo, 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 mi corazón de Dora, mi corazón de Saba de Santo es Dios. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart knows how to say to you, holy are you God. Gracious God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that you provided with the bread and the fruit of the vine. Let the bread we break and the cup we bless speak to the presence of Christ. By your Spirit, we ask that you unite us with the living Christ and with all that follows in Christ's way. That we may be that one ministry everywhere and as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. As this cup is Christ's life, let us preach the good news through our life in the world. And let us remember that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he blessed it after giving thanks and said, this is my body broken for you, eat of it. And when you do, remember me. Then he took the cup and giving thanks, lifted it to those around and said, this is my blood, this is my life for you. Drink of it, and whenever you do of this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Pour out your spirit upon this table and the gifts of the bread and the cup that they might bless those you have gathered here. It is by your grace that the broken bread is able to strengthen us to serve. It is by your peace that the cup nourishes us to pray for others. As we are made new by these simple gifts, send us out by way of the broken that we might bring healing. Mm -hmm the oppressed that we might offer freedom, the hungry that we might feed them, the lonely that we might offer a family. And when by your grace we are gathered from north and south and from east and west, not by anything we have done, but by your love, we will join our sisters and brothers, the saints and sinners, the complainers and the committed with hearts full of gratitude for you, God and community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. In order to prepare for the serving of this feast, we ask the ushers and acolytes and servers to come forward at this time. We want those of you who are guests with us today, that here at Founders, as well as all MCCs around the world, we celebrate an open communion. You don't need to be a member of this church or any church, for you are welcome just as you are. Please, the table is set, all are welcome. Simply 
simply look around and view it. Anything you want to do it. Want to change the world? Well, there's nothing to it. There. Is no life that I know to compare with pure imagination living there you'll be free if you truly to be you will find in your mind there's a world of endless fascination no more fun place you can be than in your imagination you can dream any dream you can savor every situation Life in there's a sensational sensation, and if you want to see magic lands, close your eyes. And you will see one. Wanna be a dreamer? <laughs> Just be one. Anytime you please, and please save me one. There is no place to go to compare with your imagination. So go there to be free if you truly. There are many who cannot come physically to this table. Let us take this for them. Let us take it not only here at this table, but let us take it to them with our lives. There are also many who cannot come to this table because they have believed the lie that they cannot. Let us not only take it at this table for them, but let us take it to them with our lives.
before we prepare to leave, a couple of notes. Remember several weeks ago when we had those little shredders and we put in all those things that we just wanted to let go of? Behold, all things new. <laughs> So some of the creative folk um, in the congregation got together and they used all of that in order to make this fabulous, beautiful cocoon, um, chrysalis, I guess, um, that our dreams might actually grow out of and we can transform all of that stuff that we're letting go of into nourishment for those new dreams and those new hopes. And so thank you for everybody who's so creative. And if you're creative and you want to come forward, just let us know because we've got, we've got some really neat things that we're hoping to do um, in the not too distant future. I'd also like to um, make a special thank you to Garrett who uh, has joined us this morning. Up a little earlier than usual. He, he is normally at the 11 o'clock service. And so thank you, he's doing double duty today. Um, and, and I would like to, would like to hold in prayer um, everybody who is traveling. Um, a number of the members of our congregation um, have just left Victoria and are on their way en route right now as we speak. Um, and so uh, a number of people have been kind of um, holding down the fort, putting things together. And so Garrett, thank you for, for, for substituting today for Jane. And please hold everybody in prayer. So now as we go out into the world, may you know that you have everything that you need in order to weave those dreams, God's dreams. It is a hope and a dream for us to live differently. And to do so, all we need to do is use our presence to make that space and maybe do the most difficult thing of all. Listen. Just listen. Invite somebody to share their stories. Look people in the eyes meet a new friend or knock on the door of a neighbor and who knows maybe you too will find yourself chasing butterflies may you go go in peace and go with god i now invite you to rise you're able for our closing song mm -hmm.